Okay, lesson one, joining God's team, how, how to make sure you're going to heaven or how to make sure you have a relationship with God, that you're a, a real Christian. Okay, are you on the team? Are you on God's team? We need to evaluate our lives and, and see if, uh, if our relationship with God is real. I'm um, deciding to become a follower of Christ is the best decision you could ever make. It's the best decision I've ever made in my life by far. Um, the word Christian means Christ in you. The word Christian just appears two times in the Bible, um, but Jesus said, follow me 33 times. The term Christian, uh, the terms becoming a Christian, being saved, asking Christ in your life or Christ into your heart, being born again, all mean the same thing. Either you have a relationship with God or you don't. Either you're going to heaven or you're not. You're a true Christian or you're not a Christian. And so we're going to examine that today in four points here. And the first one, four steps to join God's team. You can see in the upper right-hand corner there, that little hand-drawn picture. Um, we're on one side. That's us, the stick figure. God's on the other side. God has a plan for our lives. He loves us. He wants a relationship with us. He has purpose and forgiveness and meaning for our life. But we're separated. Like, uh, like, like there's a river. There's a canyon. And it, uh, it's like a river of sin. And we can't experience God's love and plan for our lives. The Bible says we need to realize God loves you and has planned for your life. In John 3, 16, God says, for this is how we, God loved uh, the world. He gave his only son so that everyone who believes him shall not, will not perish but have eternal life. And then in Jeremiah, it says, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans for good, not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. God's plan for your life is just not a plan for your life. It's better than your plan. It's better than the world's plan. It's the best plan for your life because he made you, he loves you, and he died for you. So why do you think most people don't experience God's love and plan for lives? I mean, our world is broken with a lot of hurting people. The reason why is we're separated by sin from God's love and plan for our life. You can see the picture there. Um, we're on one side and God's on the other side, and sin separates us. The Bible says in Romans 3, 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I've sinned, you've sinned, Billy Graham sinned, the Pope sins. Um, sin is just, it's just ignoring God. It's not necessarily doing bad things. It's doing your own thing. And look at this verse in Isaiah 53, 6. It says, all of us like sheep have gone astray. All of us. Each one has turned to his own way. Notice in the blue, it's highlighted in his own way. It doesn't have a bad way. This is his own way. It's just ignoring God. There's so many people who say, well, I'm not a bad person, but they, just, they don't depend on God. They just ignore him. They're, they're created for a relationship with him, and they're missing that purpose. So they've just gone their own way. But the Lord has caused the iniquity of all of us to fall on him. So here's different ways people try to reach God. Through good works, through religion or church attendance, or through rituals, through philosophy, morality. But no matter how good you are or how religious you are, you can't reach God. It's like trying to... Uh, jump across the Columbia River. We're on the Oregon side, on the Washington side. No matter how much you train, no matter how much you try, you, you run and jump as far as you can. You're not going to jump across that river. You need a bridge, okay? Look at Ephesians uh, 2, 8, 9. God saved you by his grace. Grace means you don't deserve it when you believe. And you can't take credit for this. It's a gift from God. Notice the word gift is highlighted in yellow. It's a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things you have done. So none of you can boast about it. You cannot earn your way to heaven. This is the biggest lie in the world that most people believe. You think, are you going to go to heaven? Yes, because I'm a good person. <laughs> They're probably not a Christian if you think that, okay? Because it's a free gift from God. You can't earn it. Okay, so here's how you ask Christ in your life or how you get to heaven. Jesus Christ is the only way. Jesus Christ is the only way to get to heaven with a relationship with God. Notice the verse at the bottom. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Notice the word I am. I is highlighted. Okay, It doesn't say good works is the way, church attendance is the way. No, it says I am the way. And you can see in the picture there that Jesus is the bridge across the river of sin. He's, he's the only way. So we're either on one side or on, we're on the other side. Okay, we must personally invite Christ as Lord and Savior. It's like having him come into your car, your life, and letting him be the driver. Okay, Lord means he, uh, he's in charge of your life. Savior is that he died for your sins and stuff. And so, um, you know, you can believe in like in vitamins. 
and you can carry around the vitamin bottle your whole life. You can go to the vitamin store every week, but you've got to open it up and receive them into your life. You can have a coat and it can be really cold outside and you're cold because the coat's not on you. Uh, you can believe in the coat with all your heart. You can like the coat and stuff. I mean, you can clean the coat, but you've got to put the coat on. So you can believe in God, but you've got to ask him into your life, like let him into your car. Okay, and so check out this verse, John 1, 12. But to all who believed in him and received him, he gave the right to become children of God. So there's three highlighted words there. Believe plus receive equals becoming a child of God. I believed in God. I went to church. I tried to be good. I didn't try not to do bad things, but I um, I wasn't a Christian. I wasn't a true child of God. But I, on June 24th, when I was 16 years old at FCA camp in Santa Barbara, California, I received Christ into my life and I became a child of God. And I, I, I felt different. I had a new sense of purpose and stuff. And most of the world believes in God, but they haven't received him. I say that's true about 80% of the world. I think the biggest lie in the world is people think they can earn their way to heaven by being a good person and good works. You know, we want to do good works out of gratitude for the free gift that God has given to us. So let, let's look at this picture here, the squares at the bottom. You're one of these three squares. I don't have a personal relationship with God. I would like a personal relationship with God, and I have a personal relationship with God. So one of those three things. So I'm going to give you an opportunity to ask Christ in your life and become a born-again follower of Jesus Christ. And you say that prayer, and you're sincere. Um, he'll come into your life. It's not the words. It's just the attitude of your heart. So just say this prayer with me if you want to make sure if you're, or you're not sure if you want to ask him in. Then after this, I'm going to play a short three-minute video that summarizes what I said, and they're going to have a prayer also. You can say that prayer too with the video. Dear God, I know my sin has separated me from you. Thank you that you love me and have a plan for my life. Thank you that Jesus died for my sins. I am, I am sorry for living my own way. I want to re receive your forgiveness and ask Christ into my life. Come into my life and lead me. Thank you for forgiving me a relationship with you forever. Amen. If you said that prayer, let me know or let someone know. You need a mentor to help you grow in your faith in the Lord. If you ask Christ in your life for the first time, you're like a brand new baby Christian and you need the milk of reading the Bible and you need a mentor to help guide you. Okay, I'm going to play this video now. And once again, they're going to say a prayer at the end. And if you want to ask Christ in your life, you want to make sure I'm going to say the prayer at the end also. Thank you for taking a few minutes to listen to a story that has changed my life. This story is far too important for me not to share it. Since the beginning, every person has struggled to fill a void in life, a void that was formed when man chose to go his own way without God. The Bible says that every person has become separated from God. We're separated from God because of the bad choices we've made. God calls these choices sin. We've all sinned in some way, whether by lying, cheating, or simply doing things we know are wrong. These choices that we have made keep us from experiencing God in heaven. Some people believe that if your good actions outweigh your bad, God will accept you. But the Bible says that nobody is good enough to earn his way into heaven. We all fail to meet God's high standard of perfection. Even our very best isn't good enough. But there is good news. God loves us very much. He loves us so much that he sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to this earth to bridge the gap between God and man. While Jesus lived on this earth, he helped thousands of people and performed many miracles. But then Jesus was taken by soldiers, beaten and nailed to a cross to die as a payment for our sins. Once these soldiers made sure Jesus was dead, they placed his body into a cave and rolled a giant boulder in front of it. Before Jesus died, he said that he would rise from the dead three days after his death. Because of this, and to make sure nobody stole the body, the cave was guarded day and night. But after three days, Jesus was alive. He came to see many people who then spread the news and told everyone they knew what had happened. It was true then, and still is today, that Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus came to show us the path to God. The Bible says that the only way to God is through faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus paid the price for our sins and bridged the gap between God and us. Today, God is offering you a free gift. Nobody can get to heaven by just doing enough good things or by religion. There is only one way. Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the free gift that God has given us. 
All you have to do to receive this free gift is to tell God that you need him. You can receive God's forgiveness of sin and the gift of heaven by faith. Today, Jesus knocks at the door of your heart and desires for you to let him in. The Bible says that if you trust with all your heart in Jesus Christ and turn from your sins, you will spend forever in heaven with God. If you would like to trust Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord of your life, silently pray this prayer from your heart. Dear God, thank you for loving me. I confess that I've done bad things. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins and that you raised him from the dead so that I may spend forever with you. Thank you, Jesus, for coming into my life and being my Savior. If you prayed that prayer, tell someone you know that is a Christian that you just asked Jesus Christ to come into your life. If you now trust in Jesus, we encourage you to find a church that believes Jesus is the only way to heaven. Remember this promise found in the Bible. Now that you're a believer in Christ, absolutely nothing can separate you from his great love. Man, that's just a great video, a great summary. Um, if you said a prayer and one of those two things, or for assurance of salvation or for the first time, be sure and let me know or, or someone know. Because like I said, you need a mentor to help you grow and help direct you and be your buddy in your exciting journey with Jesus Christ. Hey, if you have the workbook, there's a, a page to fill out there. Um, jot down what God said to you and some triggers to help remind you. And so make a great day and let someone know.